living in a world and even the church has become so caught up and engrossed in the here and now that we forget about eternity. Some of us have been living, trying to live our best life. And yes, God does want us to prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers. But we cannot get so caught up in the here and now that we forget that there is life that is after this and that life does not consist in the abundance of things that men possessed. And so often we forget about eternity. I want you to share this message because this is very, very uh, crucial message this morning. And some people have listened to preaching and teaching for years with little or no understanding about the afterlife or what would take place thereafter. And so the Holy Spirit prompted me to kind of bring to you um, an excerpt of the teaching that I did um, on Wednesday night. So I'm bringing it to you uh, now. Um, and I want to say this, the rapture and Christ's second coming, heaven, hell, judgment, and eternity, all of these things are real. Do you hear what I said? They are real. It's not a figment of someone's imagination. There will come a time when every endeavor and all that men have dreamed and schemed of will become as nothing. There will be a time when God will put the final period at the end of the last sentence. And every person has an unavoidable, inescapable appointment. Hebrew 9 and 27 says, and it is appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. So let's go to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. And we want to read a few verses here. Verse 11 through 15. Amen. And if you haven't shared, share this, please. So we all have an unavoidable appointment. And one by one, all who ever lived will stand before the judge's bench. What am I talking about this morning? Court is in session. Court is in session. And if you read our scripture from Revelation chapter 11, now Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 through 15, it'll read like this. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Dear God, as I bring forth this word now, I pray that it will fall on listening ears and receptive hearts. Holy Spirit, have your way. Let this word that go forth, go forth with clarity, conviction, and power. And we will forever give you the great, the praise and the glory and the honor that is due your name. In Jesus' name, amen. This court is in session. And as we just read those scriptures, Jesus 
Christ is the judge. John in the first chapter of Revelation gives us a glimpse of what the glorified Christ looks like. He has a white garment down to the feet with a girdle around his waist. His hair is like wool. His eyes are like a flame of fire that can just see straight through you. His feet like brass and his voice is roaring uh, as the sound of an ocean. His countenance is as bright as the sun. And heaven and earth fled away from his presence because his countenance was so fierce. And so in this court session, everyone, I want us to understand this before we get to this specific court session, but everyone will meet Jesus Christ one day. They will either meet him as savior or they will meet him as judge. And in this particular session, he is not the savior. For all who have saved, who have been saved, have already had their sins judged at Calvary. And they have received their rewards in the first resurrection at the judgment seat of Christ. And so here what I'm preaching about is another judgment. This is the second resurrection. Well, you may say, well, I am saved, uh, um, so I don't need to pay attention to this. See, and I want you to understand it. And the reason you need to hear it is because we need to understand how important it is to accept Christ. And this will also help us to be better witnesses to people. And it will also give us a fervor and a desire to stay in Christ. And so at this judgment, this Second resurrection, God will send out a summons to everyone who has ever died without knowing Jesus Christ. And they will stand before him at the great white throne judgment. They will stand to be judged by the one that they rejected. Jesus Christ is a judge and he is angry at this judgment. He's holy. He's righteous. He's all knowing and he has all the facts. There will be no bailiff in this court, no plaintiff, no attorneys, no jury, no opening statements, no opening arguments, no pleas. No alibis, no excuses. Having rejected the grace of God, there will be no mercy or long suffering. There will be no appeals. There will be no pardons. All classes of people will be present here. That's why the scripture says the dead, small and great. The dead means those who died who are not in Christ. Small and great. There will be those who outrightly hated God, hated Christ and were in open rebellion against God. There will be the skeptics there, the mockers, the atheists, the agnostics, the spiritists, the Satanists, the sorcerers, the idolaters will all be there. The fearful, the thieves, the unbelieving, the abominable, the extortioners, the murderers, my God, the whoremongers, the adulterers, the fornicators, the liars, the reprobate the astrologers, the mediums will all be there. The psychics, the witches, the warlocks, the fortune tellers, the palm readers, all cults will be there. Those that believed in living for self, those who trusted in money, 
those who trusted in meditation and reincarnation will be there. Those that believe that doing great deeds or just being a good, decent person will be there as well. Those who believe that just belonging to an organization or a fraternity will lead to eternal life. Those people will be standing before the judge. The court is in session. Those who are celebrities, athletes, entertainers, those who chose to live for this world, but not for the world to come, will be there. The procrastinators, those who plan to get saved one day, those who had plans and said that they were going to give their life to God at one time, but they died before they had the chance. They will be there. Those that took the mark of the beast or the number or his name, they will be there. Through the weight of scripture, we see and can determine that Adam will be there. Why did I say Adam? Any reference to Adam in the New Testament speaks of death eternal death and damnation. And that's why we had to have a last Adam to do what the first Adam failed to do. So through the weight of scripture, we can determine that Adam will be there. Pharaohs will be there. Y'all better hear me. Wicked kings, Cain, citizens of Sodom, Gomorrah, and Nineveh will be there. The rich man, the unrepentant Pharisees and Sadducees and the scribes and the Herodians and the unrepentant thief on the cross will be there. The Jews who were Abraham's seed but rejected their Messiah will be there. Those who shouted crucify him and let his blood be upon our heads and upon our children's, they will be there standing before the judge. Pilate who washed his hands but still allowed Christ to be crucified will be standing there. Those who oppose God's people those who oppose his work, those who shake their fist in the face of God will be there. Hitler, Stalin, Mussolini, Madeleine O'Hara, who started the national movement of there is no God and was instrumental in taking God out of, out of starting taking God out of society and out of schools, will be standing there to answer before God. Those who stood high and proud in the earth will stand before the judge, but they will also have to bow. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess. There will be many religious people present at the great white throne. What? Hindus, Buddhists, Muslims. Yes, wake up. The court is in session. Jehovah Witnesses, Christian scientists, Hebrew Israelites, Catholics, Mormons, Protestants, many will be there. Many Baptists and Presbyterians and Methodists, and Seven Day Adventists, Church of God, Church of God of Prophecy, Church of Christ, Church of God in Christ, Disciples of Christ, Word Faith, Pentecostals, my God, my God, Apostolics, Foursquare, Westlands will be there. 
There will be Lutherans there, Charismatics, Episcopalians, Unitarians, Evangelicals, Foursquare, Assemblies of God, and so many more. There will be those from all denominations and even those who adhere to no particular denominations will be there. There will be those there who believed in one God. And there will be those there who believed in many gods. Although all the people that we named belong to a religious organization, but if they did not die in Christ, they will be there. Those who thought that they were saved, but they were not. False converts, self-deceiving, professing Christians who honor God with their lips, but their heart was far from him, will be standing there. We see here the moral as well as the immoral. We see the priest and the pimp. We see the apostle and the addict there. The prophet as well as the prostitute. The deacon and the drunk. Multitudes of Sunday school teachers and Bible college graduates and even Bible theologians will be there. Gospel singers, nuns, missionaries, elders, philanthropists, human uh, humanitarians, good moral people will be there. Good ethically, but they were not in Christ. Outwardly, they appeared godly, but they were not truly saved. They did not do the will of God and they did not die in Christ. They professed Jesus, hear me, but would not repent and turn from iniquity. Those that were ashamed of Jesus, those that were once in Christ, but abandoned faith and turned from the truth will be there. There is no such thing as once saved, always saved. There are those who allowed the cares of this life to lure them away from God. My God, I hope the saints are praying this morning. There will be those there who are horribly wicked, but also there are those there who will are considered to be good, wholesome, and decent people. If you have not shared this, please share this. Please share this. And all of the people there have one thing in common. Regardless of whether they were small or great, they have one thing in common. They were not saved. Some will profess that they did work for Christ. And the scripture tells us that many will say, Lord, Lord, we've done marvelous works in thy name and we've cast out devils and we've done all those things. Another scripture also tells us not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. And so they will profess what they did. And Jesus will say, the most terrifying words in all of eternity. He will tell them, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. This is the Supreme Court of Courts. All measures were exhausted on earth. And the justice here is terrifying, it's sure, and it's irreversible. God will bring every work 
into judgment. God will judge the secrets of men. All skeletons will be brought out and made manifest. Everything done in the dark will be brought to light. The things that you did when you were out of town, the phone calls, the text, the secret conversation, even the thoughts, the things that you thought about and you repressed. No matter how long it's been, the statute of limitations still applies. The statute of limitations has not passed. All works will be called into judgment. Every gray hair that you gave your parent, that you did not repent of, every lie, every idle word will be brought into judgment. Every time you heard the word of God and you turned your nose up, every time you mumbled under your breath at the word of God or at the servant of God, you will stand and give account to it. And this judge cannot be bribed. There's no smooth words that you can give to sway or to persuade him. And the books will be open. One book will be open is the book of the law, which is the standard by which every one will be judged in. That's why I said books. Yes. And then there will also be the book of life. And it is an, it, it is an official role of those who have accepted Jesus Christ. And you would wonder why would this book even be there if everyone who um, is at this judgment is not saved? Well, this is an official judgment. And so God will call an official role and everyone's name who's not in the book will not be saved and they will be judged. Can you imagine the horror and the terror to be looking at a righteous judge, knowing that you rejected him, knowing that you turned away from him, knowing that you chose the pleasures of life over him. And this judge is, is, has the decisions. His judge has the names, rather, not the decisions, that are written in the book of life. And you know that your name is not in it, but you're hoping. That your name will be there. But he reads and he reads and he reads. And no one's name that is standing before him is in there. And after the books have been read. Oh yes, that's a good question. Are you in the book of life? But after all books have been read. Then God will pass the final sentence. You all hear me? The final sentence will be the lake of fire. The lake of fire will be eternal without end. It will be uninterrupted. It, there will be no mercy. It, it is a place where there is darkness, heat, unquenchable fire. Torment. It is a place where the worm will never die. There will be pain so bad that there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And people will cry out for mercy, but there is no mercy. And there will be full consciousness. Yes, there is no such thing as soul sleep. A, a, a person will be fully conscious. They will have an eternal body and an eternal spirit to reap the, the consequences of the decision of their rejection against Christ. There will be full feeling in body and emotions. There will be memories that will haunt and taunt them. The regret and agony of lost opportunities. 
There will be no family reunion in hell. There are those who are deceived to think that I will go to hell because uh, my mother or my father or my boyfriend um, or these people, uh, they did not know Jesus. So I'm going to go to hell with them and be reunited with them. There will be no family reunion in hell. Hell is a place of separation and hate and torment. We're talking about the lake of fire, rather. It is a place of torment. And there will be no grand reunions. Why did I say all of this? If you want mercy, grace, and forgiveness, you can have it now. But you must receive it now on this side. Jesus did everything that was necessary so that no one would have to go to hell and face this judgment, face the second resurrection or the great white throne. Jesus died on the cross. He did not come to condemn the world, the scripture says, because the world was already condemned. The world was already going to hell. But Jesus came so that no one would have to go to hell. And many have questioned, why would a loving God send people to hell? And I want to answer that because the Jehovah Witnesses have a false answer. But I want to give you the real answer. And the answer is simple. God provided a way so that no one could go to hell. But if people reject, amen, we're going to get you saved right now, sister, right now. Hallelujah. But God provided a way. Today is the day of salvation. My God, God provided a way for people not to go to hell. But if they reject his plan of salvation, if they reject his mercy, if they reject his grace, then God does not send them to hell. He gives them their choice. Hell was made for the devil and his angels. But if you reject God's way out, then you make the choice to go to hell. So it is not God sending anyone to hell. But today is the day of salvation. And I want you to share this and share this because God told me that some people were going to get saved and this message was going to be a literal matter of life and death for people. So if you haven't already, before I read the scripture, I'm going to give you a chance right quick to please share this, to please like this and share this to everyone that's on your page. Share this, share this message. Amen. Because God is doing something. Share this message. Share it. Hebrews 10. Verse 27. And I'll read it. Starting at verse 27. It says, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall de devour the adversaries. He that despises Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy which has trodden under the foot of the Son of God and has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath despite unto the spirit of grace." For we know him that has said, vengeance belongs unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. Verse 31 of Hebrew 10. And I've read verses 27. And now this is the last verse, verse 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But the Holy Spirit is here today and he is speaking to your heart and many other hearts as I am preaching this message. And to those who will view this message at a later time, 
the Holy Spirit is speaking. And either you are under the blood with your sins forgiven, or you have trampled over the blood of Jesus beneath your feet by rejecting him. So what will it be? Will you be under the blood of his protection or will you trample over his blood and be lost? What would it profit a man to gain this world and lose his soul? But today is the day of salvation and the Holy Spirit is speaking right now. God is pleading. He is calling you to come because the night is far spent and the day is at hand and Jesus Christ is soon to come back. And if should, should death catch you or should his return or the rapture catch you with your work undone, my God, you will be lost. But now is the time of salvation. And it's time for us to give our heart to God for real. It's time to stop playing. We've done enough. And now it's time for the, for to be saved. And those of you that want to be saved or you need God to renew your faith and you want to come back to God right now, I want you to open up your mouth and to open up your heart in your own way to the Lord right now. And I even want to say to those who are in the church who think that you are saved, but your life reflects hell. If your life reflects hell, in hell, you will lift up your eyes. I have to tell you the truth. If we do not get the hell out of the church, y'all hear me, the church will end up in hell. And when I say church, I'm not talking about the real body of believers. I'm talking about the people that are playing church. But if we don't get it out, then we'll end up in hell. And make that decision today. God wants you to make that decision today. And he is knocking at the door of your heart. Let him in right now. Repent of your sin. There is no taste that is good enough to make you go to hell for. There's no alcohol. There's no drugs. There's no cigarettes. There's nothing. Anything that will call bondage that is worth going to hell for. There is no man. There is no woman. There is no relationship. Don't die and go to hell. The preacher lied to you. If he told you that if you're a man and you can sleep with another man that you'll go to uh, heaven, you've got to repent of that. He, he lied to you or she lied to you if they told you if you're a woman and you sleep with another woman that, that, that you can still get into the kingdom of heaven. The Bible tells us that none but the righteous shall see God and we must repent. And I refuse to stand before God because I did not tell you the truth. You must repent from your sins. God is a holy God and his holiness requires him to judge sin. So if you have sin in your heart right now, I ask you, I beg you to repent of your sin. Turn to God. Ask him to forgive you. And it doesn't matter what you've done. Yes, and out of all of the things that I've named, there are some people who were some of that. And so the Bible says, and in, in uh, 1 Corinthians, I believe it is, and such were some of you. But you are washed. You are justified. Come on, you are sanctified. You're made clean. So it doesn't matter what you've done. God loves you, and he doesn't want you to stay that way. You repent of your sin. You confess your sin. He will in no wise cast you out. Don't spend your time on this earth and die and go to hell and ask the Lord to forgive you 
in your own way. Say, here am I. Touch my heart, God. There are so many things in there that's not right. God, I want to be saved. Save me, God. I want to be whole, God. I want to see you, God. I want to live for you. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to stand before the judgment of God. Come into my heart, God. Change my heart. Make me a new creature, God. I want to be right. God, I want to be saved. I want to be whole. God, help me. I need your help. And if you cannot think of any words to say, do like Peter, who was sinking, who was sinking, and he cried out, Lord, save me. Those three words will save your soul if you mean it. You can cry out, Lord, save me. Lord, help me. Lord, deliver me. It's me, God. I need it. I, I drop all excuses. It's me, God. I need you. I need you in my life, God. Help me, God. Save me. Deliver me, God. I want you to deliver me from this bondage of sin. Deliver me from these things that I'm doing that keeps drawing me and keeps drawing me. God, deliver me from wrong relationships. God, deliver me from wrong ideas, God. I know you can do it, God. You deliver me, God. I want you to save me from the inside out. And if you pray that prayer, he will do it. Oh, yes, he will. He will do it. Somebody say, Lord, save me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he will save you to the utmost, to the utmost, Jesus saves, to the utmost, Jesus heals, to the utmost, Jesus delivers, to the utmost, Jesus is coming back again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, if you be ashamed to own him before men, hallelujah, he'll be ashamed to own you before his father, which is in heaven. And some of you need to tell God to save you from yourself. Some of you need to tell God to save you from yourself. God, save me. I want to be right. I want to be whole. God, save me. I've even come to church, but I didn't feel nothing on the inside. I was pretending. I was acting like I knew you. Uh, some of you even in Pentecostal environments, you made up tongues. You made up stuff. It wasn't really the Holy Ghost. You repeated something that somebody else said. But God can give it to you for real. He can give you the Holy Ghost for real. He can give you the real fire for real. He can give you that thing that burns. He can give you that thing that changes your life. He can give you that thing that'll give you power to lay hands on the sick. He can give you that thing that'll give you the power to cast out devils. He can, he can give you that thing that'll change your very life. If you cry out to him, save me, God. Save me from my sin. Save me from myself. Save me from my own thoughts. Save me from my own mind. Save me from my own religion. Save me from my own ways, God. Save me, God. Save me from my past. Save me from my experiences. Save me from me, God. Save me from my memories. Because I keep go drawing back to things, God. I can't forgive who I'm supposed to forgive, God. Save me from my memories, God. I know in my mind it says let go, but in my heart I can't let go, so God, save me from it, God. Help me from it right now, God. I want to be right. I want to be saved. I want to be whole. I want to be a new creature. I want to walk like you want me to walk. I want to talk like you want me to talk. I want to be what you would have me to be. And those of you that are living in rebellion and you're not doing the will of God and God told you to witness, God told you to preach his word. Oh, God, rise up and be obedient right now in the name of Jesus. Declare from this stay forward. I will do what God wants me to do. I will be what God wants me to be. I will say what God wants me to say. I will not respect men more than I respect God. I will not allow the fear of people. I will not allow my family. I will not allow my friends. I will not allow people that I know. I will not let anything cause me to go to hell. I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God. And this is the real gospel. And God and woe be it unto the preachers who refuse to proclaim the truth of the Lord. Because it is only the truth 
that will make you free. A lie will keep you in bondage. Come on, don't tell me that I'm all right and I'm on my way to hell. Don't tell me, come on, that, 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 that. I can just uh, do what I want to do. And as long as I give or as long as I can sing, as long as I can play, as long as I can give, as long as I give God a little bit of my time, that I'll be all right. Come on. God is not concerned with your time as much as he is your life. God wants your life because a matter of fact, if God doesn't have your life, everything that you give him is tainted. God said it makes him sick because it's a loud symbol. It's tinkling. Come on. God, God said it makes him sick. Hallelujah. He said, I would that you be cold or hot. But since you're lukewarm, he said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. Now that was to the church. That wasn't to uh, people that were out there. That was to the church. So that proves not, um, that debunks the lie of one saved, always saved. You can be what God wants you to be. Give him your heart and your life today. You can inbox me. I will, if you need more, if you need me to take you through it, you can inbox me and I'll take the time to explain to you the more excellent way. Repent of your sins. If you have not been baptized, be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants to save you. He wants to forgive your sin. Just a mental ex- assessment. I know Jesus. No, you can be aware of who he is, but not know him. To know him is to experience him. And if you have not experienced him, experience him, you are lost. But you don't have to be. I preach this way because I love you and I don't want you to be lost. I don't want you to go to hell. No one can claim that they love you and they won't tell you the truth. If this message has blessed you, I want you to share this with somebody. I want you to share it right now. And if you haven't already given your heart to the Lord, please do so at this time. And if you want to be a blessing, uh, you can inbox me and I'll give you the information. You can do that as well. We love you with the love of God. We thank you. I thank you for even taking the time to listen to this message. And I know that the Holy Spirit is speaking to many hearts right now. We love you. We we are praying for you. And until next time, keep looking up. Keep looking to the Lord. Because he loves you and he wants you to be saved. Before I sign off, you make your calling and election sure. Make sure and very sure that you are saved. I love you with the love of God.